Hello, everyone, and welcome to another losing episode of the Giant Take Podcast. I'm Josh, and I'm joined by my friend and co-host, Alex. Uh, we're coming to you a day after the Giants were defeated 28-3 to the Philadelphia Eagles, and that scoreline might resemble some resilience for you fans because if you remember the Atlanta Falcons and the New England Patriots score was 28-3 at one point, and the Patriots stormed all the way back in that Super Bowl to win after being down 28 to three. There was no resilience in this giant scene. There is absolutely no determination and there is no returning from a deficit like this. That was the scoreline and the final scoreline at that for your two and five giants. Uh, the reason that we're coming to you today um, on a Monday morning is because this loss was so devastating that it just made Alex tremendously sick from having to watch this team all afternoon that we we couldn't even bear uh to record last night so we're here this morning um alex has recovered from the giants illness that unfortunately causes you to uh receive when you watch this team um but that that's where we are right now and uh through through Two weeks in a row, the Giants are unable to score more than 10 points, uh, which is pretty phenomenal in a poor way. And that's where we are. Alex, how are you doing? Yeah, um, just after the game, nasty, nasty headache. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was having to watch the Giants for 60 minutes. Maybe it was, uh, you know, the New York Jets. You know, who knows what it could have been. But I'm going to guess. Uh, the Giants. What do you think, Josh? But um, anyway, I the game was very difficult to watch. I think in the in the best way to describe it, and it's it's really tough when you know you. I wouldn't say have expectations that the Giants are going to win, but at least you know keep it competitive in some sort of fashion. Uh, and, and the fact that they're just not able to do that throughout is just very very frustrating stuff. And um, you know, it's not. Um, you know, I, it's not good when you cannot even feel like you're in the same league as another opponent. And uh, the Giants have not been able to compete with the Eagles or the Cowboys in this division for years and years and years. And uh, it just seems like it won't, it'll continue to be a non competitive uh, atmosphere when we go up against those teams. And that's really the most frustrating part. Absolutely, Alex. And we talked about how the Eagles are one of those teams that most likely will play down to their competition, and they have done that in the past couple of years. However, I said on the preview podcast, I was like, they play down to their competition, but I will not be surprised whatsoever if this team just breaks it open and give you know the Giants an absolute ass whooping in this game. And I'm sorry, but that's that's what they did. That's exactly what they did. Um, you know, I unfortunately wasn't able to watch like most of the game very closely because of um, you know, me covering the Syracuse volleyball team who also had a game at one. So I was kind of more locked in on that, but, um, you know, I was following most of the first half at least. Uh, and then I was obviously getting those Twitter notifications that were breaking, uh, down, um, which Alex, you're going to have to give me more context on this. Daniel Jones getting taken out of this match, uh, or, or this game, um, and drew Locke getting, you know, replacing him, um, so I don't know where you want to start, but obviously in our normal offense defense flow, I feel like that's pretty important. Um, so give me your insight on what happened there with, with Drew Locke coming in. Yeah, so I mean, at that point, it's 28-3, right? Um, so the game's practically over. I think there was about 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter, 11 minutes. And, um, you know, at that point, I'm kind of just thinking, oh, they're bringing the backups in. Um, I don't know if that was necessarily the case. Obviously, post-game, Dable said that, he was trying to kind of give the offense a spark of sorts. Um, so that was, it was a weird decision. Drew Locke didn't look great. He didn't look terrible. Um, you know, he had that one deep connection with, or almost connection with Hyatt before he ended up cracking his ribs or whatever happened there. So, um, you know, very, I guess not, there wasn't a lot of sample size, I think is the best way to put it there for Drew Locke. So not sure how you can judge him going forward from this, if at all. Um, but from the Daniel Jones part, I mean, we've kind of known the guy is done uh, with the Giants after the season for a while now. And um, I think Dable doing that has pretty much confirmed it. And um, you don't, you know, kind of say what you say post game uh, about, you know, needing a spark if you are just benching the guy uh, because the game is out of hand, you know. 
Yeah, Alex, and the thing is, like, we got the sample size of Daniel Jones in this game again, and there, there's nothing there. Yeah. 14 for 21 for 99 yards. Uh, Jones didn't even have over 100 yards passing. No touchdowns to speak for it. No interceptions, although there were a couple that could have been right here and there uh, for interceptions. And it was really, you know, Daniel Jones complete a first down, or sorry, convert on a third down in possible challenge. Uh, through that first quarter and mostly the first half. I feel like it was a numerous amount of uh, Giants setting themselves for, you know, unsuccessful attempts. And again, I don't really know how good or bad Brian Dable's play calling is because obviously I don't know, you know, the plays. I don't have the playbook. But what I can tell you is there were a bunch of third and longs in the first half that I watched. And I'm sure it was recurring in the second half for them to be down 28-3. Um and it was just like, like, what are you going to do at that point? All right, Daniel Jones throws a deep ball to Jalen Hyatt. Either it's un- under him or it's over him and incomplete. And it, I feel like, we, you know, we dump it off. We run it on third and long. I, I just there, there was nothing that was going to work uh, for this Giants team on Sunday. And that it really just – that's really what it felt like to me. I mean, it was just like, okay, let's attempt to tie Rowan Tracy wrong. All right, that didn't work out. Daniel Jones, you know, scramble outside. Let's see if he can make something happen. He can't find anyone down the field. I mean, that, that'll that gain a couple yards. Devin Singletary returning. Uh, you know, Tyrone Tracy earning the job. But let's get him some carries. Nothing. Uh, Malik Neighbors returning from injury. Four catches, 41 yards. Wandale didn't crack more than 25 yards on six catches. Nothing worked in this offense today. Absolutely nada. It was... So unbelievably terrible to have to sit and to watch this Giants offense put up a bleak, a very bleak three points in this game. Um, that's 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 all I got. I mean, yeah, not really I, much else to say besides that. I mean, just wrapping it up, I guess, on the offense real quick. Obviously, the offensive line kind of had a big part to do with a lot of Daniel Jones' struggles. Um, You know, the Eagles were feeling like getting sacks every two seconds or every other play. And um, Josh Azudu at left tackle did not look comfortable. Uh, And it really looked like some of the cohesion between some of the other guys as well, uh, especially John Runyon uh, on the left-hand side. JMS also had to struggle a little bit. you know, those guys definitely got beat quite often. And this Eagles defensive line, especially interior-wise with Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter, were quite imposing. Um, and it was something that the Giants O-line just couldn't deal with. And Daniel Jones was under pressure uh, the entire game from start to finish. So um, Andrew Thomas definitely missed. And the Giants have to find a real left tackle because moving a backup guard uh, to tackle is just not the solution and not how you're going to win football games. Um, but Josh, unless you have anything else, um, we can take a quick break now, uh, and then we'll be back I, talking about the defense. Uh, yeah, a game like today can leave players demoralized. Are you concerned yeah. about that in your locker room? Yeah, no. I mean, look, no one was happy about the result. Uh, I think we have a strong group. Uh, you need to have a strong group in this league. There's a lot of ups and downs. Unfortunately, we've had more downs. But our guys will, will come back, we'll regroup, and we'll do everything we possibly can do like we do each week to, you know, to be at our best on Monday night. All right, welcome back in to this episode of the Giant Take Podcast. Now it's time to break down the Giants' quote-unquote defense, but more to break down everything that Saquon Barkley brought to the, to the table on offense. That's really what – this is going to be the Saquon Barkley revenge segment, basically. But what, something I will say, Alex, that I wanted to mention before we went to break, but – uh, we're back now, so I'll, I'll talk about it now. When is the last little trivia question? When is the last time this season a team scored three points in a game? I have no idea. Have Do you no know idea. what week of the NFL season we are in right now? I think we're week well finishing up week seven, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, you're right. You're right. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> okay. We are finishing okay. up week seven. The last time a team scored seven or three points, two teams did in the same week. The New England Patriots on Thursday night football and the Miami Dolphins, I believe, facing the Seattle Seahawks back in week three. You have to go back four weeks to find a team that scored three points in a football game. And having to compare yourself to the Dolphins is surprising. More having to compare yourself to the Patriots. That's a a fun one for sure. But kind of unbelievable that 
this team, again, only scored three points in this game, and we had to go back four weeks to find another team who did so. Uh, so that's a little just tidbit I wanted to add in there. All right, so, um, yeah, <laughs> Jalen – uh, Jalen Hurts did like fine, uh, 10 for 14, 114 yards and one touchdown today or yesterday, I should say, was all about Saquon Barkley and MetLife Stadium. There was a little bit more on the line, whether Saquon wanted to say it before the game or not, you know, before the game and this entire week, he was talking about it like a normal matchup, like any other football team, you know, when Saquon Barkley on that first handoff lowered his shoulder, that this was more than just a football game. He had that dog in him, to, to say it lightly. I mean, 17 carries, 176 yards. That's about 10 yards per carry and a touchdown. Saquon Barkley wanted to make sure that Brian Dable, that Joe Shane, that the Mar and Tish family knew what they have missed out on, what they decided to not do, and how that is going to be a decision that they regret. And you know what? Whether they regret it or not after yesterday, Saquon did everything in his power. And I mean everything. The man almost rushed for 200 yards in this game, which is something you really don't see running backs do in this day and age with how much the ball is thrown over the air. Uh, he did his utmost to at least make them ponder it <laughs> on their minds yesterday in that football game. And that's what I have to say about uh, what I have to say about Jalen Hurts. Um A.J. Brown, we don't have players who can cover him. When you're putting Nick McLeod on him in a one-on-one, -on -one, obviously A.J. Brown's going to win that battle. There is no doubting that. So A.J. Brown, if you're going to put one of our Giants quarterbacks that is not good, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I think the you know you touch perfectly on Saquon. I mean, there's nothing really more to the story. Um, obviously, it was probably the right decision for both sides, and you know it ended up that Saquon Barkley obviously – was going to have a very good game against us. And it was kind of written in the stars that that was going to happen. But um, defensively, otherwise, the Giants, especially in the beginning of the game, did look pretty solid, uh, ex except for a couple of big explosive plays, like what you said with the A.J. Brown uh, catch with the long Saquon Barkley run for 60-odd yards. Um, so they were able to mostly contain the Eagles for the, mo for the majority of the first half. But uh, a few ex splash explosive plays just... Uh, they were unable to stop. And then the second half, they really weren't able to stop much at all in the game. It kind of gotten out of hand. But a couple of guys I want to mention, the defensive line was ferocious. Dexter Lawrence, Brian Burns, Zizo Jalari, even my Especially guy Tomon Fox half. getting in there. Um, so they, they definitely got uh, some nice pressure on Jalen Hurts. And uh, unfortunately, it was the the defense or uh, the secondary, excuse me, that just couldn't hold up as we got to the second half. And uh, once the Eagles started just kind of tossing it around, uh, the Giants really couldn't stop them uh, from that front. And uh, the, the the defense was set up well in the first half. I think they had kind of a game plan, uh, a Ben don't break kind of mentality. They were kind of playing a lot of too high, not getting so much, you know, trusting that their defensive linemen could get to Jalen Hurts without the blitz. And then, started to get a little bit more aggressive uh, and then they were able to kind of pick us apart. So that was uh, kind of the struggle there for the giants and um, you know, tough one, obviously for the defense when your offense uh, punts 11 times uh, and cannot get off or cannot stay on the field. Um, and you're on the field for, you know, double the amount of time as the Eagles defense. And then you begin to get tired and it's tough to play a uh, consistent defense when you're on the field for, you know, 40 minutes of a game. Yeah, Alex, and also it's pretty tough, like you were talking about with this offense, when the longest play of their entire game was 14 yards yeah. down the field. I Zero. mean, we talk about the Zero defense, 20 right? plus yard plays. <laughs> we talk about the defense, Josh, right? Like we're recapping the defense second half, but a lot of the defense's issues are stemming from the offense. So really it's, it's all connected. Obviously, that's why there's three phases of football and, um, you know, they all kind of interlock with each other and are all important because this defense can no matter you could have all Hall of Famers on this defense, uh, but with this offense, they'd probably still be giving up quite a few points. Yeah, but and also like we're we're talking about how it's stemming from the offense, but like let's be honest here, Alex, it's stemming from one word and it's one position and it's quarterback. 
That is the yeah. reason this team is really failing right now. They don't have a good quarterback. And that is yeah. why they're going to keep on losing games throughout the rest of the season. And there's really nothing that can stop that because it's not like Drew Locke is going to come in and make a huge difference. So It's as simple as that, to be honest. We could come on and record for 30 seconds and just say, the problem is QB and end the episode. And it would be, you know, probably about 60% as insightful as going through, you know, talking for 20 minutes. So that, that's kind of the state we're in right now with the Giants. Yeah, I think that, that's exactly the state we're in with the New York Giants. And I really don't think it's going to get any better after the thrashing on Sunday Night Football by Pittsburgh over the New York Jets last night. 37-15. Russell Wilson looking like his younger self out there on the field. <laughs> uh, and uh, when you have a running back like – Najee Harris also with you and you know wide receivers like George Pickens you're gonna have dominant games like that and the Steelers they're thrilled because they get to have another primetime matchup where they can destroy another New York team next week for us it's absolute pain we're gonna have to wait till Monday night to watch the New York Giants take on the Pittsburgh Steelers which really just lets us enjoy our Sunday but is going to crush us on Tuesday morning so that is what I have for that um yeah, uh, the New York Giants take on the Pittsburgh Steelers on Monday night. The Steelers have really shown how they are a dominant team now, uh, or they can be a dominant team against the poor team. Uh, and this is just really going to be, sorry to say it, it's going to be another loss, guys. I don't know what else to, I don't know how else to put it. Um, okay. Josh, you're spoiling our preview episode right now because that's all we were going to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, of course, we're still going to preview it. And of course, course. we're going to give you injury updates. And maybe Malik Neighbors wasn't at full strength, and now he will be. And it's going to be another 100 plus yard uh, reception, you know, game for him. And that could very well be the case. We've seen it before from Neighbors. Maybe he wasn't 100% this weekend. Uh, that's one of maybe four positives that we'll, that we'll be able to touch on later this week. Uh, but we'll, we will have that preview for you most likely on thursday friday yes friday um so for that being said thank you so much for watching and or listening to this episode of the giant take podcast subscribe down below on youtube drop that like button as well or if you're listening hit that subscribe button wherever you're listening Apple podcast spotify pandora wherever it is we thank you so much uh our socials is the giant take pod on twitter tiktok instagram and facebook alex on twitter at anorian 23 i'm on twitter at josh 29 and um, thank you so much again. I'll send it back to Alex for his uh, closing. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for listening to today's episode. Hope everyone has a good week, despite the Giants uh, not having a great weekend. And we'll see you looking forward uh, to the Steelers on Monday Night Football next time. Peace.